information about your own institution, understanding your own institution. So we've actually already yeah. talked yeah, a little bit really, about yeah. the uh, cafe. And he said this is again part of the development in the university here to promote student enterprise <laughs> and that uh, very ambitious building project that you've got going. Yeah. Um, the University of Darnang. So do you know about this one? Yeah. Can you say a bit about that? Yeah. Oh, great. Oh, I saw what the company in the software are to sing in Vietnam, the big gig and software. And then, in the big company, to come to Dana for you, the children in the IT faculty in the Nang University. And um, uh, um, the, the, the company uh, have a staff and, and uh, update uh, curriculum for um, in university and um, um, and then usually um, um, the university uh, have uh, university um, update the uh, data um, from um, when when uh, children finish in um, the university to a um, company and write uh, uh, update uh, data at uh, the two year, four year, yeah. Right. That's a very good, for, thank you very much. That's a very good example, I think. And, um, you know, I've, I've spoken to um, uh, people involved in teaching computing IT curriculum in yeah. the past, and they will always say to you that um, if you're not careful, your students will graduate with out-of-date skills unless they have a very close relationship to the industry and the developments in the industry. So your actually your relationship with the Axon Active Company is one way in which you ensure that your students are getting the right relevant skills for when they graduate and you've got there an opportunity for your best students to um, to seek work in those companies. So I think it works both in terms of the curriculum and in terms of the employment of your graduates. I'll come back if there are any other examples, so be thinking about those, but I want to come back to, I think, Yuli's point about the, um, we need to think about kind of resistance to employability curricular or enterprise curriculum and how we address that. But I wanted to say a little bit about the, um, the survey that we did for another Tempus Plus project that uh, our partners in Greece were in involved in and a number of partners in Uzbekistan in Central Asia. And what we were looking for in those surveys was to take um, a kind of, at a moment in time, what the views of students, staff, and employers were in relationship to what was being provided in our universities around employability and enterprise. And we used um, in, in London Met's case, we used Google Docs. Do you know Google Docs? Yeah. So it was an online survey, which, if you use it, it's free, and it turns your, it analyzes the data for you, it turns it into graphs and so on. It's certainly worth knowing about if you don't know it. There are other tools you can use, but we use that. Um, so we got. Uh, I think, I think there were eight, altogether six, Uzbek universities. Uh, the University of the Peloponnese and London Met were the principal respondents in the survey. And I just wanted to share some of the findings, the general findings, with you. And I'm, I'm sort of suggesting this as one way of finding out what's going on in your institutions. 
what your students think of your employability curriculum and what your staff think of it. And that might address something that Yuli was mentioning. So I've just put some of the headlines up there. The staff in the universities thought that actually what we needed to focus on more in terms of our curriculum were those soft skills we've been talking about this morning. Independent critical thinking and general knowledge. That means not necessarily just subject specific knowledge, but knowledge that you can apply to different situations. You know, are, are any of you from law faculties? I think there are. Who's a lawyer well, here? I'm a lawyer, but You're a actually, lawyer. I'm from uh, faculty of public security. So. Okay. But Let, I'm a lawyer, yes. I'll test this one out on you then. Lawyers will say to you, when they graduate, it's more important not so much that they know the law, but they know where to find the law. So it's not simply enough to have the subject knowledge. It's important to know how to acquire the knowledge in the future. And that's an applied skill. It's not one that simply involves rote learning of case law, for example. And I think you can apply that across the subjects, across the disciplines. There was a general sense that when the university was providing central services like careers, and I don't know, there may be equivalents of the careers department in your universities, we need to find out what those are in a second, or employability services or enterprise centres. The students weren't, and the staff were not necessarily aware of what the students thought of them. So there was a lack of connection between what the university was providing centrally and what the teaching staff knew about what the students, how the students were using those services. The staff thought that the universities could do more in terms of work placements, practical classes, and support after graduation. So again, these are ideas for you to think about. Would they be relevant for you? We've talked a bit about alumni. We talked about them this morning in relationship to fundraising. We could also talk about alumni as, and I think Danielle will be talking about that shortly, alumni as ambassadors for the university to come back to the university and act as mentors for undergraduate students. So they potentially are some of your best assets. And yet, in many universities' case, the connections with the alumni network were quite weak. They also provide, inevitably, a network of, to add to your network of employers. If they're working, then you get another contact, another employer to add to your list, your database of employers. So that might be something that you need to think about, and we were asked by staff to do more in terms of developing those networks. And um, how do the staff, we asked, feed back their views to the university? and the staff felt that they gave feedback on a regular basis and were often listened to. Now, I want to come back to you, Liz, point, because I suspect, and I'm thinking of my university, our university in particular, that the staff who completed this survey tended to be the staff who were most interested in employability. And the staff who were a little bit resistant to it who actually thought that universities were about education, not about supporting students through to employment, 
wouldn't have filled the survey, wouldn't have filled the questionnaire. So my question really, my, my, I suppose what I'm left with here is, we've got the views of those staff who are supportive and sympathetic to employability, but in the case of my university, and it sounds like you lose as well, there are staff who are less predisposed and sympathetic, who are interested in teaching uh, a curriculum that doesn't have to think about employability, that just deals with blue skies thinking or ideas or whatever. Does that apply to you? Maybe not so much. So what did our students think of our employability curriculum? Well, they wanted more finance management and they wanted entrepreneurship. So you can see maybe that's an echo of that point that I made earlier, that a lot of vacancies are within the small and medium-sized enterprises and students are beginning to realise that they need those skills when they go out after graduation and seek work. They need to know how to manage budgets and accounts, and they need to know how to create ideas, how to generate ideas, and put them into practice. So they need enterprise skills and management skills. But they're also aware of the need for independent critical thinking. So they don't want to sit in a class and listen to a teacher simply spoon-feeding them notes that they then reproduce in exams. They don't want that. They want to be taught how to be independent, critical thinkers. It goes back to the lawyer example. It's not just enough to know the substance of the law, but you need to know how to think about the law and where to find it. So the students were telling us that in our survey, and we need to think, as you will, what does that mean in terms of the way we teach? Is there a, a, a problem with the way we teach students now? Do we need to think about other ways of teaching, other ways of learning, other ways of assessing our students? So again, we have this problem that students didn't always know what central services were providing. So if you have a university careers centre or an enterprise centre, some students weren't aware that they, they existed or they weren't aware of the full range of support and services that they provided. So be warned, if you're thinking as part of Hub for Growth for setting up a central service around employability or careers. Think about the ways in which those centres need to communicate with the full range of faculties across the university. Don't be in the situation we're clearly in, where a number of our students were not aware of the full range of services that were on offer. How do you overcome that, that problem? So you can see here, I won't go through them in great detail, but you can see here the kinds of um, skills that the students wanted employers to provide. They wanted more networking opportunities. They wanted to know the full range of jobs that were out there. They didn't feel they really knew what jobs there were armed with their degree. They needed help and they needed somebody to give them a, a fuller sense, a fuller picture of what employment opportunities there were. And finally, we spoke to employers. Every, every group we surveyed came up with the same answer. They didn't want specific knowledge, they wanted students who could think independently, critically and creatively. They wanted those soft skills that we talk about 
how do we incorporate those into the curriculum? Yuli was talking about that this morning. How do we embed those soft <coughs> skills like communication, team working, meeting deadlines, presentation skills, oral presentation skills? How do we ensure that those are part and parcel, the bread and butter of our curriculum? Employers are doing having some relationship with our university, but I think the examples that you've given suggest that they, they provide that service if there's something in it for them. Employers won't, without thinking understandably, what they will get from the relationship with the university. They'll be less inclined to spend time, devote time, to working in partnership with you. What can you offer employers? And, and we've had some good examples of clear offers that you've been making, skilling up, skilling up your employ their employ employees and providing them with a cohort of graduates armed with the relevant skills to enter their labour market, their workforce. So if we want employers to be involved in the curriculum, not just on a one-off basis, but on an ongoing basis to keep reminding us what the skills needs are in their sector, then we have to find ways of bringing them into the university that benefit them as well as us. We have to be responsive to their, um, when they talk about the kinds of skills that are needed, we need to be able to think creatively about the way the university can help them in promoting their business. So there's some creative thinking that we need to do in terms of developing ongoing and sustained relationships with employers. So I just put that up there to remind you that, and to thank you for the contributions that you made to the Good Practice Guide. You'll have had it distributed, circulated in time for this uh, workshop. Have a look through it um, and see the kinds of examples that you've provided because they provide very good, I think, qualitative data that can be used maybe in you know, developing and enhancing what you do already, but for other universities to get some ideas as to see what's possible in your own universities. So I said I'd come back. This is my example. I've gone through some examples from London Met University, and I said, you know, what, well, what do all of those mean in terms of developing a strategy? Well, the university has responded to that higher education and research bill. It's done so by uh, putting itself forward as a university that would like to offer apprenticeships. And I'm not sure the results are out yet. I think they were coming out this month. But if successful, then the university will be running apprenticeship schemes in conjunction with different employers. I know there's a, already a development in policing to develop a policing apprenticeship scheme at London Met. Labour market trends, small business support, as I said, we've got to think about ways in which we can promote that. And we are doing that now. Our Enterprise Centre, I think those of you who came to London, um, went down to the Enterprise, uh, to the Accelerator in Shoreditch and met Toby Cress. Toby is now running an entrepreneurship module who, um, I understand, recruited over 200 students last year. So that's a direct response in some ways to the call from employers, from staff and students to develop the curriculum around entrepreneurship. What the 
for me, what the survey that I've just given you, the evidence, suggests is that we need to have greater coordination between our central services and our faculty provision. So whatever we do, and I'll give you an indication very briefly tomorrow of what the university has done in response to that, but at the moment, you might argue that at London Met and maybe at some of the universities we've been looking at in Uzbekistan, the services are fragmented. They're not coordinated. They're not joined up. And we have to think about ways in which we coordinate those activities as part of our employment strategy. Coordination of alumni, that's what I've just been talking about, how important that is, how important alumni are in terms of the uh, development of our curricula and the reputation of our university. And how do we promote those soft skills in our curriculum? And we've got some organisational responses to that at the university that I'll talk about tomorrow. So that's it. That's where I finish now. It's for you to think about what are the implications of those different kinds of data and information, government policy, labour market trends, local institutional factors. What do they add up to? in terms of your university? What do they mean for the development of the employability and enterprise plans that you're thinking of?